As a jazz musician, you know, there's this lineage of musicians and, you know, for me, trying to search out my own path and figure out, okay, so if this is what my predecessors, my ancestors did before me, you know, how can I stand on their shoulders and look to the future and be, you know, a, a fresh voice for this, this music? I was in fourth grade. It was like, it was, you know, band day. My parents were like, you want a true band? And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do band. And so they had all the instruments on this table. And I think, you know, they had a flute, trumpet, saxophone, clarinet, whatever. And I thought the trombone was really cool. So I tried to play it and I picked it up. And the instructor was like, no, nah, I don't know about this. You, because my, I was really small as a little kid. So what happened was my arm wasn't long enough to get out past like third or fourth position, which is bad because I think trombone has more than three or four positions. So he was like, try something else. And so I saw the saxophone, I was like, oh, that's, that has a lot of keys, that looks kind of cool. And it was shiny, and I was like, okay. So saxophone was actually like my second choice. For this music to live and breathe, it is a music of innovation, it's a music of improvisation. So for you to play the exact same thing as everybody else did before you, it's a necessary step you have to take. Yes, you have to respect the lineage, you have to know how to do those things, but from that you have to discover your own method of sounding like you, essentially. And that's kind of the base question for me as a performer is, what do I sound like? One of the primary reasons I sound the way I do is because of Dave Hilgen. Like he's done so much for my playing and um, being there to tell me what doesn't sound good. Which I mean, it sounds mean, but I mean, you need somebody like that. You need you need that guy when I play something and he's he's just he just says, "Hey, your time feeling is really weird right now. Like you need to fix that." Or this lick was supposed to be learned last week, and you still only have it in two keys. Like you, I you, I think that you need somebody there who is not afraid to be completely honest with you as a player. And he's been that, he, he showed me like, if you want to be good at this, this, this is what you have to do. That works. That's a... Everybody thinks, you know, like I practice all the time every day. And I try to, I still try to get like three, four hours a day in even now, but like during the summer or when, when school work has kind of died down, like especially like syllabus week, I'll practice like almost all day. <laughs> What I eventually want to do is get up to the doctoral level and uh, keep pursuing jazz studies and then get a gig like um, Greg's, Greg Yasninski, like uh, get a professorship teaching jazz studies at a university. That would, that would allow me to do both the things that I love doing, teaching and performing. <laughs> In order to be good at music, you have to practice scales and practice licks. Do the same thing 
over and over again the same exact way and do it with proficiency in order to slowly build what would hope what you hope to be is a good sound <laughs> I would say that music is definitely the, the, the dominating force in my life. It's kind of like music is the top, it's like the everything, and then whatever, I do, whatever else I do in life kind of points towards music and helping me some way be a better musician. Definitely, if there was one person, anybody alive or dead, I'd probably want to play with John Coltrane. Um, not even to get a gig with John Coltrane. I mean, just to... We don't even have to be performing. Like, if I can play a gig with that... If I could pl just play with that guy in some basement with him and his quartet and nobody else is watching, I wouldn't care. It's just to be in that environment with that caliber of musicianship, with that particular musician and his level of intensity and his level of spirituality and this the just the amount of power that goes into every note that he plays and just just being there with him and just experiencing that firsthand i think that would be probably the number one thing <laughs> for me to one day have somebody it could be after i die i don't care but if somebody a hundred years from now said hey you sound like john Romanita," that to me is kind of the real you know, that's the real identity, is when I can say, you know, I have my own voice to where I have defined my own pathway so strongly. Mm -hmm.